Hello Planeswalkers! Today we will be continuing our text following the 2016 Four Color Commanders. Brea, Ethereum Shaper, is our non-green commander from the 2016 Precons. As such, her lacking of green makes her perfect for our token artifact commander, and in many ways she is a commander that is very much needed. With her printing, we now have a commander that can combine the best artifacts with the most powerful of artifact support. Let's start off with what our best artifacts are. These are the ones that will have the greatest impact on our board state. Darksteel Forge and Mycosynth Lattice. The Forge will make all of your artifacts indestructible. The Lattice will make everything in play an artifact. This ability we will discuss the repercussions to later, but we also run Metalworker to gain us oodles of mana to play our artifacts with. We also have quite a few combos in this deck. Basalt Monolith combos very nicely with Power Artifact for infinite mana. The cost to untap the Monolith goes down to 1 mana, netting you 2 colorless mana each time you use the effect. Ashnod's Altar, Sword of the Meek, and Thopter Foundry is another infinite mana source. Combining it with cards such as Blood Artist or Disciple of the Vault and your opponents will be toast. We also have a method for infinite turns via Time Sieve, utilizing either the aforementioned Thopter Foundry trick or through Thopter Assembly. Yes, I know some folks don't have much of a taste for infinite combos, but sometimes you need one to drive home just what a combo deck really can do. Aside from that combo package, we have a few other tricks up our sleeve. Arkham Daxon, yes, the infamous artifact commander from the Mono Blue Realm has come to our aid to give us an amazing tutor ability. Indomitable Archangel gives all of our artifacts shroud once we have three or more in play, which is pretty easy in this deck, trust me. Along the same lines, we run Padim, a newcomer to the artifact commander game, who gives them the slightly better than shroud hexproof, and you get draw power if you have the highest mana cost among artifacts. Sidri, Galvanic Genius, also pops up with a neat combo using Aetherflux Reservoir. For 3 mana, you can use Sidri to make our Reservoir into a creature with lifelink to then blast opponents for 50 damage while gaining back that 50 life that we had to pay to do so. And since you can reuse this ability to your liking, this is one of our win cons. Now let's talk about how making everything into an artifact with the Lattice is a great and fun way to win the game with arguably unfair methods. Supreme Verdict will destroy every creature in play. If we have our Darksteel Forge in play, our creatures do not die. The same can be said if you choose to run Nevenero's Disc, which can become a repeatable board wipe. Also, keep in mind that since every permanent in play is now an artifact, this will eliminate every permanent your opponent has in play, as even their lands will become artifacts. I'm sorry. We also run a few cards that make having a field of artifacts just fun day for us. Hellkite Tyrant can steal everything from an opponent if they control only artifacts. <clears throat> Lattice. <clears throat> and if you have 20 or more at the beginning of your upkeep, you win the game. If our artifacts find their way into a grave, we can return all of them to the battlefield using Open the Vaults. Our deck runs three specific Planeswalkers. If you haven't guessed by now, Tezzeret the Seeker is an auto-include for any blue artifact deck. The new Duretti Ingenious Icon class gives great utility to sacking artifacts and can even give us a trio of copies of an artifact. Yes, I'll gladly take three copies of Worm Coil Engine. Finally, Sahili Rai gives us a scry with her plus one and can give us some artifact copies for the turn. Lastly, her ultimate can tutor for any three combo pieces we might need like the forge, the lattice, the disc, or whatever other artifacts we want to play with. So now that we've covered much of what makes this deck dirty fun to play, we need to talk about the mana base with which to play it. Of course, we're running our five artifact lands, which are Darksteel Citadel, Great Furnace, Seed of the Synod, Ancient Den, and Vault of Whispers. Inventor's Fair allows us to tutor for an artifact card once we hit three lands, and we gain a life if it's chilling in play and we have those three or more artifacts in play. Academy Ruins allows us to return an artifact to our library for a mere two mana. And of course, your fetches, your shocklands, all that other stuff. Brea is one of the finest artifact commanders available for players wanting a fun deck. Utilizing a ton of powerful combos with some interesting interactions, she could be a fun choice if you want a deck from the 2016 precons. But maybe you want to build her into a more straightforward aggro artifact deck. Maybe you want to take some of the older artifact commanders and mesh them into something with Brea at the lead. 
Regardless, I hope this deck tech has helped you in constructing your own deck. You can help us at the Planeswalker Project out by tapping that subscribe button. I swear you won't get mana burned. You can share this video with all of your playgroup to show what fun strategy you have in mind. And if you want to see more techs like this, like this video to let us know to keep them coming. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thopters away!